Uh, what are your favorite or what is your favorite Rasmus album? Like each of you, could you tell me what is your favorite album of your band and why? Maybe we can start with a woman because for you all the albums are, are kind of you know uh, new as a band member. So uh, how do you feel about the disco? Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think I'm ready to answer yet because I've been practicing the songs, mm -hmm. and at the moment uh, I haven't been playing uh, the songs before. So all the songs are new for me as a guitarist. Of course, I know the songs from the radio and I've listened to the albums, but it's so different to listen to an album than to play the songs yourself. So my my favorite songs and favorite albums are like changing all the all the time. Like every day I play them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good I answer. have to play like one gig and then I can answer. Okay, so I'll call you later. <laughs> yeah, call me later. <laughs> okay, Maybe, what about the rest Maybe of because of writing uh, Jezebel with Desmond Child, I was recently listening to Black Roses. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done it in, in years. So it was pretty funny. It took me back the memories, you know, to that time. I was spending about three months in Nashville. I lived at Desmond's house. And that's where we recorded most of the the vocals, and uh, it it was really it's a great album. It has a lot of um, good lyrics and 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 amazing sound. Good good songs. I just texted the guys to like some songs I was listening. Like, hey, we should take the dead list and like, you know, ten black roses. Oh, and then this song and like we haven't played them in, in a long time too. You know. Okay, I, I will pick uh, that letters album because that's that that was the big thing for us. I mean that with that album everything happened and that was uh, our uh, album to go outside of Finland and play shows and and with In the Shadows, which was the key song or the or the main single, it opened all the doors for us and we had a chance to travel all around the world and you know, see different cultures and meet new people. And also, I would say that that's a complete album. There is a red line in there. And I think that's a fantastic album still. Uh, and it's almost 20 years old. My pick is Into, mm -hmm. which is the album with the or orange cover. And um, that's, for me, those songs are sort of the memory of the Rasmus just before we had the international breakthrough. And we were full of energy, really want to go somewhere. And, you know, like all the songs are really like packed with, you know, that kind of passion and drive. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good place to be, you know, like when you're young and you haven't seen the world yet and you just really want to do it and and uh yeah cool it's cool and it's interesting that each of you is picking the different album you know so it seems like all of them are great <laughs> okay so uh and what are your musical inspirations like when you were starting playing music or doing music what was the first inspiration and what's inspiring you right now like is it changing or are you still loving the same bands like some old artists or stuff like that so what was your inspiration now we have mentioned desmond child many times in this interview but mm -hmm. that's what like when i started listening to music the first bands i discovered were kiss for example i was made for loving you mm -hmm. uh, yeah. heavens on fire both written by desmond child then later alice cooper poison desmond child then Bon Jovi, Living on a Prayer, You Give Love a Bad Name, Desmond Child, <laughs> Aerosmith, Crazy, he's Desmond Child. So he's like, yeah. all my, my childhood and my youth, I was liking songs that were somehow, uh, he was somehow involved with. So I didn't know it back then, mm -hmm. but I just figured out, I mean, I just found out this, this his music. And uh, that was like, um, that's when I'm, when my, my identity and DNA as a songwriter was born. Mm -hmm. So I'm really grateful for him, for everything he's done. 
And so how was that to meet this guy for the first time? When you met him for the very first time, how was the feeling? Yeah, well, actually it was so that he contacted me. One day I got an email from mm -hmm. him. Like, I thought it was a spam email or something, because it was like, hi, this is Desmond Child. I'm a big fan of the Rasmus. I would love to work with you. And I'm like, no way, this can't be true, you know? And so it was him, and then we set up a meeting. We had a concert in Dominican Republic, okay. and he, he came there to see us after the like this in the hotel, drinking rum and smoking Cuban cigars and discussing like if we could write an album together, and that's how it started. Cool, it's great. Yeah, so for you, it was Desmond Child, you know, for me also, when I started listening to music, you know, he was everywhere. It seemed like, you know, uh, every single hit you just like, he's responsible for that in some way. Yeah. Okay, and so what about the rest of you guys? You know, how was, or what was your inspiration at the beginning? Or now do you discover some new bands or are you still listening to the classics? I, I started playing guitar when I was five years old, so I don't remember any <laughs> influences. Well, probably my influence was my big older brother because he played guitar and that's why I wanted to play guitar also. I was too small to like reach to the electric guitar, so that's why I got an uh, acoustic guitar and started playing classical music at first. But probably, yeah, a bit later, like all the uh american punk rock bands were my like biggest influence that's why i fell into punk and rock music like all the green day of spring pennywise no effects and all that and i still love those bands yeah once you fell in love as a teenager you will always love those songs um, and those uh, bands uh for me, it was Guns N' Roses and bands like that, you know, and all the 80s stuff also. Uh, and then after that, the crunch wave was like super big for me. Nirvana, uh, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, all that kind of stuff. And I, I still like those band, bands, but I don't listen to those that much anymore. But every time I, you know, when when you could be mine from Guns N' Roses so on the ray, I something is like really warm inside of me. Mm -hmm. It's still there, you know. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I I started with uh, grunge and Metallica, maybe Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm. I also my father was a big fan of blues uh, music, so I I listened to a lot of blues artists and JJ Kale, for example. Um, but um, yeah, I think Nirvana was one of the most important things for me. And so uh, now I have a question for Lowry. Are you uh, are you uh, taking care of your voice somehow, or uh, how was it for you when you became a singer? How do you take care of your voice? What was <laughs> what's left? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, I have this vocal coach. I'm I'm taking some lessons sometimes even online. Mm -hmm. It's important and it's nice to have someone to like support you and know your problems as give good advice. Um, but I think the best thing is like if you try to get some rest sometimes. <laughs> but you know, we like to party, so what can I do? <laughs> it's not that easy to have a rest for the voice, right? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so what are your current plans nowadays? What are you planning for the rest of this year? Of course, the, the rest of the year. Sure. Test. Looks pretty busy now. We have the UMK. We're trying to win, win the finish. 
step to get to the Eurovision, and that would be in May. And then after that, we are hoping to play a lot of festivals in the summer. We hope that the world opens up and it's possible. And then later in the in the autumn, we have store the tour starting from October, mm -hmm. and we're, we're gonna go. To Prague. Yeah, we're gonna play in Prague I know. too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is just the beginning. We there'll be a lot more gigs coming later, but at least we have something to wait for. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and it's a fantastic venue, by the way. This Forum Karlin in in mm -hmm. Prague. We went there. Uh, two years ago to see Mike Shinoda uh, and we actually met him there as well mm -hmm. and uh, so and we played there once before so it's uh, it will be great fun great Can't wait I hope all the fans are listening to us right now and they won't miss the show <laughs> okay and so what would you what would you say to your fans here in the Czech Republic like uh, what they can expect for the show and what they can look forward to would there be something special, yeah, what you can already say? Good things have happened to the band. You know, we, we have Empu as a new super talented guitarist and energetic person with us. Yeah. I think yeah. we're doing better than ever, you know. The, Good the, vibes. Yeah, just yeah. the high energy all the way. Okay, so and I think that... By the way, we have great fans in Czech. So it's, it's really, we are really happy to come there. Yeah. Looking mm. forward to that. And so now, what do you think about the music scene in general? Because some people are just, uh, you know, still thinking about the old days, like when people were buying albums physically and stuff like that. And but the new generation is more like streaming music, and there are just the different platforms to uh, to get to your song and stuff like that. So uh, where are you in this kind of paradigmatic kind of stuff? You know, like yeah. did you like the old days or do you like it now? interesting it's interesting you ask this like i've been kind of watching my daughters who are 18 and 16 and they're discovering new music mm -hmm. and, and i'm discovering some interesting artists with them but um but i i somehow like the feeling that when people kind of did the discovering without the algorithm like when you kind of heard from your siblings or you heard from heard from your friends like some new music and they were like hey like check this out like this is these are some of my favorite stuff and you know you would go to a party and somebody would play a track and you're like oh hey that sounds really cool but obviously we are living in a very digital moment right now and you know like yeah, I, but... I listen to digital platforms yeah but actually i think in finland last year was the first year in like like a decade when uh the physical album sales got up like from the last year yeah. Yeah. yeah but i i honestly like to have all the songs in the world in my pocket you know mm -hmm. yeah. that feels good yeah. yeah it's so easy uh to listen uh but i was thinking the finnish radios and it's been mostly rap you know and and, and like urban electronic, electronic music yep. uh but luckily we as a band we are changing it a little because <laughs> Jezebel is on the radio at the moment, yeah. which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And also bands like, <laughs> yeah, bands like you know Blind Channel, they are pretty much played on the radio. I think it was the played song last year, the most played song. Yeah, it's it a was rock the... song, so it's it's Great. changing. So yeah. It's getting better. And do you like uh, vinyl? We promise to do our best as well. <laughs> okay, okay, fingers crossed. And uh, what about the vinyls? Do you like vinyls? Because this is something that's yeah. growing up. Maybe the physical uh, albums which are bought are not CDs anymore that much, but maybe the vinyl freaks, as myself, you know, are just you know, buying albums like this. So, do you like it? Are you planning something with Rasmus, for example? Like, yeah, we are. We have released vinyls mm -hmm. with every album, and uh, I think that's fun. It looks great, and you know, it's like a collector's item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the album sure. art is so so nice. Yeah, um, it's big. It's not just like yeah. you know, yeah. little picture on Spotify. So yeah. last, 
Russell there's Lee. a certain aesthetic if you collect vinyls and you can have a like I, that was the way that i discovered music like my my father had a nice hi-fi system and he had many vinyls and i i like the feeling when you take the needle into the groove and yeah. you know like and then first few seconds are just like kind of and then then the music starts and it, it's yeah. so, so, so that's so, magic so, that's magic right yeah. Yeah, good luck with Jezebel, good luck on European Song Contest, because the song is so fucking awesome. So yeah. <laughs> wish you luck for winning the competition. And hopefully we'll meet each other here in Prague. I'm going to be there. Okay? Yeah. Great. 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 See you in the so, autumn. Ciao, take care and stay healthy. <laughs> Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.